A recurring task is a task that occurs over and over again at regular intervals. Like let's say we want to have project meetings every week or every other Tuesday or Wednesday. And this would go over the course of the entire project. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and insert a recurring task for project meetings. And I want to put it just below the start manual. So what I'll do is I'll select the task below it because anytime when it comes to creating a new task or inserting a new one, whatever we've got selected, it'll push it down and everything underneath it. Now to insert a recurring task, the operative word being insert, come up here, click on the insert menu, go down to recurring task. It's going to ask us a few questions here like what's the name of our task? It's going to be project meetings. Then how long do our project meetings last? Not one day, I'm going to say 1H for one hour. And again, D for day, MO for month, M for minute. Now what's the pattern? Are we going to have project meetings daily, weekly, monthly? Well, it's going to be weekly, and it's going to be every Tuesday, let's say. What if we want it every other Tuesday? Then we'll go ahead and bump this up to say recur every two weeks or every other Tuesday. But I'm going to say recur every week, have it happen every Tuesday. And then down below, when do you want to start your project meetings or this task? Click on the drop down arrow. We'll choose the uh, first Tuesday after our project begins on August the 1st. And then end by, oh, about October, Tuesday, October the 28th. And then something that's interesting that we're going to learn now is that it's asking for what kind of calendar you want to assign to this task. Now remember, we created our project calendar. By default, you see where it's set to none? If we do nothing more but just click OK, this task here will go along with the project's calendar. So in other words, we have Christmas off. If the meetings go over Christmas or try to go through the week of Christmas that we have off, it'll go ahead and bump them out so it doesn't occur during the week or days that we have off. However, if I create another calendar and I say, OK, this other calendar is going to be a project meeting calendar, and I select, pretend it's there, project meeting calendar, and I have different days off for different working hours or times, then when I select it here, it's going to take precedence or overwrite for this one task, this project meeting task, the project calendar. So in other words, it's going to ignore whatever calendar I assign to this, the project calendar. So the project calendar can have its own working time, its own days off. But if I create a calendar and I assign it to the recurring task, something different than the project, again, it takes precedence. It'll actually go off of that and not your project calendar. One more thing I want to cover is that there are three types of calendars. Now you're probably asking, well, where do I go to create a task calendar, a project calendar? And then the third type of calendar is the resource calendar. Where do I go to create all these calendars? Well, as you just learned, when we created the project calendar, it's really simple. Let me click Cancel. Again, you go up under the Tools menu, down to Change Working Time. Select your default calendar, whatever it is, and click Create New. Make a copy of it. So in other words, what I'm saying is you can create 20,000 calendars here. It doesn't make it a project calendar, doesn't make it a resource or a task calendar until you actually assign it to one of those three, the project, the resource, or a specific task. So create hundreds of them in here. And like we did for the project, to assign the calendar we created to the project, we came up here, went to Project to Project Information, and we said, Calendar, you are now assigned to Dreamforce. That includes all its rights, uh, days off, vacation, whatever we created as the Dreamforce calendar. For a task, to give you an idea, you can just double click, go to the Advanced tab. You can see here, Calendar, it's none. Again, by default, if you have none selected, it goes off the project calendar. It's working days. It's eight to five hours, whatever the default that you set up for your project calendar. And then, of course, we can go to the resource view and double click and go to the advanced tab and look at the resource calendars. Now, let's get back to our focus here. We wanted to insert a recurring task. So again, I'll select the research phase because I want to insert it above it. Insert to recurring. And we'll quickly go through this here. OK, I quickly did it here again. It's the project meetings. We're going to have it the duration one hour every Tuesday, just like you saw before I click canceled. Because our focus here was, do we want to go ahead and leave this alone? Just say we're happy with this being connected by default to the project calendar, then leave it as none. If you're not sure, you can, of course, always say Dreamforce. But that's saying the same thing. If we leave it as none, it'll still go off the project calendar. If we assign it Dreamforce, which is assigned to the project calendar, it's the same thing. So. In any case, select it or not, or if you have another calendar that's specifically tied to those project meetings, like say for example, only the managers work from let's say noon to five, in which case we can create another calendar and specifically have those working times here, noon to five, 
And then when we insert the recurring task, we're going to say, look, we got to assign the calendar that has the manager calendar that they're available from noon to five to this task here. So that way we're not scheduling at funny times or trying to schedule at times that they're not available. And we'll go over this a little bit more in detail later, but to keep it simple, you can leave it as none or assign it your project and then go ahead and click OK. A couple things happen. First of all, let's look in our table here. You got a couple of icons. The first icon is going to be your reoccurring. It's got arrows going around and around, so it goes on and on for how many times? When you hover over, it says 13 times. When you click on the plus sign, you got a total of 13 meetings. Because again, it's going to be occurring once a week every Tuesday. And it's going to end, like I said, on October the 28th. And of course, you've got the little icon there, the task. It says the calendar Dreamforce is assigned to the task, which is important because as you're going through your project, if you're looking at this and going, man, when can we schedule meetings? The project managers, when are they available? Is it just for two hours from, let's say, three to five in the evenings? Get all that information up front at first and, you know, create your project manager calendar and then assign it to it. So that way, if you're confused, you can say, oh, that's right. These guys aren't part of the mainstream Dreamforce calendar. They've got their own little calendar, their own little times that we have to be aware of. And that's why this is going to be different or look different when we assign a different calendar to it with different working times. Here's a cool little thing you can do. Over in the Gantt chart, you'll also notice that it's only one hour, so you got these little tick marks. Well, why two? Well, one is for the summary task, saying the summary of what you see below is one hour for this day. Again, it's just summarizing it. Doesn't mean that there's two. Just saying that you've got a summary of one happening on this day. Cool thing I want to show you is that if you want to go out to, let's say, you know, instead of scrolling over and going, well, where's project 11? Go ahead and select the task here, the 11th meeting. Then come up here on the standard toolbar and that little button right there where it says scroll to task, click on it, and it'll take you right to that task. Which if you hover over the task, it tells us, well, it flashed on really fast there. See that one when I click on it, selects it for project 10, so it doesn't take you right to it, but it gives you just a little lead time here before, so you can actually see and focus on your project 11. So if I want to go back to project two, I can come up here, click on scroll to the task. It pulls me back. Two's right here. It gives me a little lead time so I can see what's before that. So it's not right up against it. And again, you can click on it and it'll select the first meeting, second meeting, third, and so on. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.